Hello and well met. This is founder Lairon with the Fantasy Grounds Academy. Today we're going to go over doors and windows for the Fantasy Grounds Unity map tools. This tutorial will work in most cases for most rule sets. So if you're going to be playing around with doors and windows, there are a couple things that you should know that will help you along this process. The first thing I'm going to do is discuss the lines that you have to intersect, which will make things much easier in the long run. If you're going to be working with doors and portals, it's a good idea to stay in the same tool. So what I'm referring to is up here in the top right, I am actually in the door tool. And you want to try to do all your portals and your doors at the same time, which will save you time in the long run. Also, if you make a door, if you make it too thin, it'll be much harder to click on or to interact with when you're zoomed in or out. So if you go to play mode, and you'll actually see this door when you hover over it, that's a pretty good area to click on. But if you're zoomed way out and you have a very thin door, it's going to be difficult for you to engage with the door, especially your players and such. So it's a good idea to make the doors a little wider than you think. So I'm in the line of sight tool, and I actually have a door that's already created. I'm going to make another door, even though this is not a doorway. This is just going to be an example of how you would do so. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool while I am in line of sight, and then I have the door tool. And if you notice, I have this red line, this occluder that goes through. So in this case, maybe I want it to be a secret door, or it could be a window, but in this case, it'll be a door. All I have to do is left click and drag, and it will make a rectangle shape. So I'm going to sort of roughly follow the contour of the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and left click and drag, and then release. And that places the door where you'd want it to be. In order to get rid of this middle line, there's a couple things you need to do. First, you're going to go to the line tool and then the wall tool again. And you just single left click and then double click and create this line that cuts through this line in the center. What this does is it selects the line, creates a data point, and it allows for you to actually delete this middle section without too many problems or hassles. So all you have to do is go to the selection tool after this, double click on one of these points, and hit the delete key. Now that you have deleted those main points, you can single click on the center piece and delete. So that is how you get rid of the center line. I'm going to go ahead and back up a little and show you the other way. So I'm going to hit Control Z to kind of get back to this point here, which allows you to undo things. So Control Z is a command to undo a mistake or maybe you need to fix something. In this case, you can also draw the same line. So just single click, double click, and that will allow you to draw this line. Go to the selection tool. You single left click and highlight or drag this little square over. Now we're not drawing lines, it's just a selection tool. And you can see it's it's already selected all three tools. You hit the delete button and it should get rid of it. And it did, but see you notice it took this line with it. So you gotta be careful when you use that tool because it'll do that sometimes. So it depends on how the lines were drawn and such and so forth. So it's easier to just double click in the center or one of these other points, hit the delete key, then single click when you're in the selection mode and hit the delete key. The biggest problem I notice with most people that use the tools is they forget which tool they're in. So when you're in the drawing line tool, that's when you're going to be drawing things. When you need to select, move, or push things around, you need to be in the selection tool. That's something that's very important. It will frustrate you if you forget where you're at. Very easy to do. I still do it even though I know better. So this is basically the, the same process if you're going to do a window. So I'm going to go ahead and move over and do the exact same thing. The only real difference between these two is that a door has a lock on it. So if you want to lock a door, you hold down the shift key and you click on the door and that will lock it. So as the game master, you can lock doors so that players can't just barge in and you might require them to actually use a roll, maybe a pick locks or maybe they forcefully open it with a strength check, whatever it might be, that allows for you to do that. So shift and click will allow you to lock a door when you're in play mode. So I'm in play mode again right now. And if I hold down the shift key, I'm going to zoom in on this. Right now it's it's closed. So I'm going to hold the shift key and click on it. And you can see this little padlock that, that shows up there. That means the door is locked and the players cannot open that door. So to undo that, you just repeat the process, shift and click. 
And then now this door is toggleable so that the person that's at the door can click it and open and close it. So it's just a matter of a status that you put on the door. So over to the window, it's the same process. So if I go to the line of sight tool and the rectangle tool again, and I'm gonna click on window, and it's really the same process. So if you come over here and you double click here and you left click and drag, there is your actual frame for your window. And then I'm going to go to the line tool and back to the wall tool and again draw another instance of the line here to intersect with that center line. And then I'm going to go to the selection tool, double click, click on the delete button, and then single click on this dot here and hit delete. And that gets rid of that middle line. So it's really the same thing. It's just that the, the window blocks movement but not light whereas the door blocks light and movement so there's that's the only difference between these two now one other caveat here that you might come across is occasionally you will need to have a door that's going to be a secret door so there's an example of that here and what you're going to do is a little bit more of a of a lengthy process is we're going to put a a, a secret door in here and this is the only time you really need a double door or a double line for the walls. So here is the double line, which normally you can get away with a single line, but in this case, we're gonna actually use a double line. So if I come over here to the doorways, there's the secret door or the toggleable wall, and then I'm gonna left click and drag, just like I did with the rectangle tool with the other portals. So if I take this and I, drag, left click and drag. I'm gonna make this portal. You notice it's gone beyond the, the, the red lines, which is okay for now, because we're gonna adjust that when we're done. Once the portal's drawn in, go to the select tool, go to the line tool, single click, and then double click. You need to be in the correct tool. So I need to be in the wall tool. I was still in the door tool. So this is how tricky this can be if you're not careful. So if I double click there, that's where this is going to line up. And this is where the, the points that I need to get rid of. So I'm gonna go back to the selection tool, double click on one of these lines, hit the delete key, and then single click on these lines and get rid of these. Now on secret doors, you want the doorway or the door frame to line up with the actual lines so that it is more secretive and it doesn't show this shadow for this doorway. And the other thing is you need to close these ends. So right now these are open ends because there's no line of sight here or no occluder. So I'm gonna go to the line tool, make sure that I'm on snap to grid, which is normally selected anyways, and then just single click on this point on the left and then double click on this other point and this will close up the end. This way when you open the door or when you go through here, the light does not shine through the wall. Now that it's, that's taken care of, I'm gonna to go to the selection tool. I'm just gonna single click and drag these points from the edge and bring those into the contour of the wall. And this way, this, this door is now hidden. So it is not sticking out. So that is how you deal with most portals and such in Fantasy Grounds. So when you're making walls, you generally just need a single line, except for maybe when you have a, a situation like this where you have a secret door and you want it to be pretty much hidden. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is that you're going to have problems with the actual hiding of the door. You'll see a, a, a shadow there or a lump. So when we're in play mode and I actually change, turn the light of sight on, line of sight, this is what uh, what you'll see here and there won't be any evidence of a secret door. This door happens to be open, so if I close it, it will make it to where the, sh the light doesn't come through. So this is another thing you can see, this assassin and see some of the light come through here, depending on, on how her vision is, but she doesn't have any natural vision. So anyways, that's how you handle those. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, this is just a, a tutorial on the, the tool itself. I'm not showing the entire map because I want to make sure I have it focused in on just the parts that I'm working on. So anyhow, take care, have a good weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.